loves and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Morgan. I make videos about luxury handbags, fashion, and lifestyle. So if that's your thing, please subscribe and turn on notifications. I upload twice a week and I would love to have you here. But today I'm going through some bags that are quite popular bags, but I would never buy. Everyone has different tastes, so of course if you have these bags, I'm not saying they're awful or you shouldn't have them or anything like that. I'm not meaning to offend, but I'm going to go through some reasons why I don't prefer these bags. You guys know on my channel, I always preach buy what you love, but I do get asked my opinion about certain bags, and this video is a way for me to answer some of those questions about what I think about some of the styles that are out there, so let's get into it. First bag I won't be buying is the oh so popular Chanel 19. Now, I have tried it on. I did think about it for a while. I liked the black and white big tweed one. And then I saw that the denim pink one is gonna be coming out in the coming season. So I have been tempted by the bag, but when I really sit down and think about it, it's just not for me. Even though Chanel has declared it a classic so they can raise the price every year, I don't really think it's a classic bag. I think it's going to date when this puffy, pillowy bag trend is over. It's not gonna be the most stylish bag. Now, of course, if you love it and you're gonna wear it no matter the trend, it might be a great bag for you. But for me personally, I don't love it enough where I would wanna invest that much money into it. Plus, it's astronomically priced. It's so expensive for such a casual style bag that I'm just like, you know, the only function of this would be with casual clothes. I don't really think it looks nice on a night out. I don't think it looks nice dressed up. I just don't want to sink that much money into a bag where I don't see more than one purpose to it for my wardrobe. And also, the leather that it comes in is quite delicate. I think the combination of the price of the Chanel 19, the materials it's available in, and the fact that I just don't think it's a bag that I'll be reaching for year after year, even once it's not the most trendy bag. That's why I just don't see myself buying it. The second bag is actually a category of bags and it is anything from New Bottega. Bags are pretty cool, but I do find the issue that I don't think they're classics. They're just too trendy and they're too out there and it's like when you see them all over on Instagram they look amazing and really cool and like something interesting and new and different. Then I went and I tried on a few and I was just like um yeah they're okay and the price is like quite high especially that little dumpling bag. Maybe it looks like a baby's diaper so I just don't see myself ever adding that clutch style at all. But the padded cassettes maybe are a little better, but I liked the one with the chain and I tried it on and it was so heavy that I was just like, it's just not worth it. I'm not going to get the use out of it. Also, I think this chunky heavy chain thing is a trend and I don't know that it's going to be a trend that I'm going to be happy to carry on after it's like not necessarily a trend itself. I just don't think the new styles of Bottega are for me. The only one I think I would consider is the Jody because it's like kind of a take on their older styles. Super cute and the small one especially, I think that's a nice one. I think the price point is a little high so I would probably wait until it hits a pre-love market. For the most part, they have some other really outlandish styles that just like don't make sense at all that are just so oversized or like so weirdly shaped that uh, I just don't get the point of them. Number three is a recent thing and Louis Vuitton limited edition pieces what has been happening with their recent collection here's a little slideshow of a couple of them and I'm just I mean we had the crafty collection that was just horrendous like someone needed to edit that like there were elements to it that were nice and then it looked like they just chunked the kitchen sink at the bag I just don't understand it like what was the point like did no one at the design meeting say like, hey, maybe we should just take out this element and make it a little more classic? I don't know, it's just not for me. And they did that kind of like poker collection with like cards and it was just too much. Like, I just didn't get it. And then, then they did the NBA collection. Guys, that's just like a cheap collaboration. Like, the bags don't look nice. There's just... I think the collaboration could have been done in a much cooler way. It just ended up looking cheap to me, so I wouldn't go for that either. And now they have this sheerly awful collection that no one asked for. There's like 
the LV in one color shearling and then the little designs in another color shearling and then like a trim in another color shearling all on this like leather bag and I'm just like stop like I don't know who is on the design team right now but they need to like edit like please edit like I love a good like fun Louis Vuitton limited edition I love my Escal like pastel tie-dye one in past years even when I didn't think the collection was for me I used to still think like oh these are some cool pieces I could see who they work for for the past few limited edition collections they're just so awful <laughs> I just wouldn't add any of them. Another one is going to be super controversial because everyone loves this bag and it's the Gucci Marmont. Anything with the Marmont logo, I just feel like even when it came out it looked dated. Not dated even in like a cool like oh it's got a vintage vibe way which does a little bit but it's more so dated in a sense of like that bag looks like you bought it three years ago. I don't know like even the new ones, I still feel like they're like three-year-old bags. No, I don't think you should buy bags because they're trendy or because they're new. But when the bag, like, the style just looks dated and old, I just don't know. I just don't like it. I don't like the logo. I think the clean Gucci logo looks so much better or give me the horse bit any day. But there's something about the Marmont logo that I just feel is, like, a bit tacky. Sorry. I mean, I know people love it, but even the belts, everything, like, it's just so overdone now. Number six is the Saint Laurent Lou bag. Now, I don't understand this bag. I don't understand why you want a pillow as a bag. For some reason, this bag has gained a bit of popularity, and I honestly don't get it. I really don't. I know it's a more casual style, but I feel like a camera bag from them is a better casual option than the Lou. The Lou just feels a little cheap to me. I think it's just the puffiness of the leather. There's just something about it that like just doesn't seem that luxurious. I just feel like it's a very trendy thing right now. The 19 has the puffy leather, the Lou has the puffy leather. A lot of designers have a puffy leather option. I don't get it and I don't feel it's a style that transitions well from casual to more formal settings. I almost feel that that bag is perfect for like rich teenagers. It looks young, it looks casual. And if they've got the budget to spend on it and wear it, it looks good for their age. I don't think I would like it much on myself. So yeah, the Lou bag and any padded kind of style bag is just not for me. Number seven is a new addition to the Givenchy line and that is the Soft Antigona. I despise this bag. Why did you take such a gorgeous, structured, beautiful bag and make it look like someone didn't take care of it like it looks like someone like smushed it into their closet it got structure wear and now you're carrying it around because it's like so slouchy and it's like moldable I get that these bigger slouchier bags are in but because they took the Antigona style and then they made it slouchy it just kind of like ruins the look of the Antigona to me like I don't see the point of doing a slouchy version why not give me a new bag in a slouchy style I really don't think anyone asked for the Antigona to become slouchy I almost feel like it's a cop-out of a design rather than like sit there and really you know use your design brain and give us something new and exciting in a slouchy style they're like hmm what's one of our popular bags let's do that in a different way and push it on social media it'll be an easy sell I think it's a style that's like kind of already dated itself. As soon as this big bag slouchy trend is over, it's going to be out of style. And unlike the actual Antigona that is structured and beautiful, it had its it moment and then it moved into a classic kind of style because it's a very functional, practical work bag that polishes off a look that can also be taken into a casual setting and look nice. It's one of those bags that can really serve a lot of purposes in life. But the slouchy one, that's not really a great work bag. It doesn't add to your outfit, it doesn't elevate it in a professional way. So it would be a casual style. Why not just get the one where you could take it from a more professional setting to the casual setting? Number eight, we're gonna talk about one of my favorite pet peeves and that is Dior bags pushed by influencers. I just cannot. 30 Montaigne and the Bobby bag, both of them I think highly overpriced both look kind of vintagey style so I guess trying to make it timeless by making it look vintage which to me just kind of reads like it's old I don't know I just I don't like them 
I don't think they're worth their price point. I don't think we would have been seeing them as much on social media as we do if they wouldn't have gifted the bags to many top influencers. So they're nice bags. There's nothing wrong with them. They're beautiful bags. But I just think their price points are just too high for bags that really are seasonal bags. We really think about classics from Dior. We have a Lady Dior and then like crickets. Like they brought back the saddle bag, so I guess that's kind of a classic now, but there's not a whole lot of Dior styles that really stay around for a long time. And their price points are in that price range now where I honestly wouldn't buy a Dior new. I would always buy it pre-loved if I decided I liked a style. So I just don't see me adding any of these bags. Another thing is, is they've done most of these newer styles in smooth leathers. Why? Like you're making a good daily use size bag, then you're putting it in smooth leather. I just would never spend like the $4,000 on a smooth leather daily use bag like that. I just don't feel that it's worth the price. Doing the most with the gifting of the bags, but it's just turning me off even more to the brand. Just feel like these bags are being pushed only because they're being gifted and not because like these influencers would actually go out and buy them. Similarly to the Dior push, we have the Louis Vuitton .9 bag. Gorgeous bag, classic shape, could have been really nice, but their push of that bag just so turned me off to it. Every top influencer I follow had that bag in a different color. And the reason that it kind of miffed me a bit, I don't mind influencers getting gifted bags. I don't at all. It's a gorgeous bag, but I would never spend the price tag that this bag is to buy the bag. And the reason being is because all of them are done in smooth leather. It's the same thing. You're giving me a crossbody bag in a very smooth and delicate leather. Price point that it is, I would expect a more durable leather and something that's more scratch resistant. Just don't think that it's worth the price that they're charging for it. Plus, Louis Vuitton leather bags don't hold their value. If you look at like the Louis Vuitton twist, you can get at least $1,500 to $2,000 off the retail price of that bag by buying it pre-loved. So if you do love the .9 bag, you can definitely wait and eventually on the pre-loved market it will come way under retail because only Louis Vuitton canvas really holds a good value to it. I see why they did the influencer push and why they had their essays push it so much. My essay like was going on and on about it. It's going to be the it bag, it's going to sell out. And I had to tell her like three times, I'm like, I'm sorry this bag is just not for me. It was a big push from the company, but I don't even think I've seen this bag on my feed when it hasn't been gifted. So that kind of tells you something. It really hasn't taken off like they thought it would. I follow a lot of luxury influencers and consumers who are in this kind of luxury community and typically if a bag is hot and everyone's talking about it, it's just not just the influencers, it's the consumers as well. The people who love luxury and love bags and things like that. And this is not one that's getting a lot of buzz. Number 10 is going to be a little controversial. Well, this whole list kind of has. I mean, I'm letting out my opinions on them. And again, if you love these bags, go for it. These are just my opinions. I thought, you know, I would let you know some of my more controversial opinions. But this one, please, vegan community, do not come for me. I know you guys are passionate about, you know, veganism. Number 10 is vegan leather designer bags. This is just marketing. This is another word for faux leather. It's just fake leather. It's just anything that is not made from an animal, so it's not animal leather. And I do believe that there's a great market for vegan bags, and I believe that that should never be at a price point more than like a Kate Spade level. Like, you can get a very good quality vegan leather bag at a medium level price point or even a cheap price point. There is absolutely no reason for you to spend thousands of dollars or even like upper hundreds of dollars on a vegan leather bag. I know Stella McCartney has built her whole brand on it, but like my goodness, like nearly a thousand dollars for something that's not even leather, I just don't understand the concept. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm not saying that there shouldn't be vegan leather options. There should, but I don't think that they should be at that price point. You're part of the cost of a designer bag, other than, you know, you're buying it for the name, is the quality of leather. So actual animal leather has different qualities to it. So that's why you notice a difference in the quality of the leather at a hundred dollar handbag versus, you know, a handbag that would be in the thousands. There is a difference in the wear and tear, the texture, are actual differences in those leathers. 
vegan leather, there's not that massive of a difference. There's some difference, that's for sure. Like there are definitely quality vegan or faux leather bags that you can get. There is nothing that I have touched that it warrants almost a thousand or over a thousand dollars for a vegan leather bag. There are some brands that use this term as a marketing ploy, and that's what really gets me. Like if you have a brand that does leather and vegan leather and the price point is the same, I kind of wonder. I feel like the vegan leather side is being overcharged, but I just don't feel like any faux or vegan leather has the same longevity as real leather does. The way a real leather wears over time and the way it molds and the way it shapes and the way it ages don't exactly replicate that with the majority of faux and vegan leathers. And I'm saying faux because vegan leather is just a fancy marketing term for faux or fake leather. That's all it is. It just means a material that did not come from an animal. I get super frustrated with this and why I think it's so not worth it and why I don't buy into this. I just think about the handbags that I've had over my life and I've had faux leather, I've had real leather, you know, at different points in my life and when I think about how both of those bags have aged, the faux leather ones don't stay around as long. They'll end up cracking or like sometimes they peel or like whatever it is they just don't age the same as a real leather bag so yeah I'm not spending thousands on a faux leather bag it's just not worth it to me thank you guys so much for watching I hope you took this as a bit of fun like these are just my controversial opinions and they are just that they're opinions like if you love these bags and they're for you that is fantastic when I get asked about these things you know I usually give the more politically correct answer and I thought it would be fun to just kind of like let my opinions out for one video and have a bit of fun with it please don't take it seriously these are handbags at the end of the day don't forget to follow me on Instagram to see how I do style my bags and I'll see you guys next time bye